Welcome to another episode of Unlock Your Potential. I'm Steve Picaro. And I'm Barry Rubin. And we're glad to see you and hear and be with you again. Today, we're going to take a few minutes and talk about resiliency and how people are really uh, focused on, on developing and using more of this, especially over the last couple of years. One of the things that's very interesting, many of us were forced to be more resilient during the pandemic. But as time has gone on, sometimes, like a lot of things, if we do it for any period or extended length of time, we get worn out. So our goal today is to share some 50,000 foot view tips and strategies on how to resupply, recharge, in a sense, maybe bounce back a little bit stronger going forward. After the holidays, it's always a stressful time. And one of the things Barry and I were talking about the other day, man, it certainly has been a roller coaster for many things, personally and professionally. Uh, so today's episode, we're going to talk a little bit about resiliency. I'm going to share a couple things that have been going on in my life. And uh, if Barry feels up to it, she may share some of hers. But um, uh, as a reminder, you can listen to this on Spotify, and you can also watch us on YouTube. Um, thank you for tuning in and sharing our podcast. We're very excited to be here. And let's jump right in. It's uh, It's been a very interesting time. Barry and I know um, some of you I shared at the... Uh, Around Thanksgiving, my mom passed away in November, um, November 14th to be exact. My mother was in hospice for six months, and really for the 18 months before that, um, my wife and I were driving up from Connecticut to Massachusetts, helping out, visiting on a regular basis. My sister was the primary caregiver, but we were going up there to support my mother as well as my sister. We would take my mother out. Um, my sister and my brother uh, are both in the Massachusetts area, but I'm two hours away. So just driving up at the end of a, a normal work week um, was very stressful. Um, we would go up and have good times and sometimes not such a good time. In the middle of all this, my older son and his wife were returning home from Okinawa. Um, all three of my boys are in the Marines, and we were getting excited to see him after three and a half years of being in Okinawa. Uh, while this was going on, uh, my middle son has been in the Middle East from uh, August to today, He's been in the Persian Gulf, the Red Sea, and currently in the Mediterranean on the USS Bataan. So when you talk about being resilient and developing this ability to bounce back, I feel like I've been stretched a lot over the last few months, but I also know a lot of people who are transitioning, trying to uh, grow their business, starting new roles, uh, e even with their personal lives, are going through similar things. Uh, Barry had some some situations that she was going through, and you know we thought it would be a good time to to share again, just to touch base, to help people put things in perspective, and to share some some common strategies that have worked fairly well in the past. But they're also good reminders. Barry, anything you'd like to share uh, with the group? Remember, what happens on the podcast stays on the podcast. Well, I think for me, when I realized that I actually was resilient was when I got my cancer diagnosis, because you just you go through so much, you know, emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually you question life you you just you know it's very easy to fall apart 
or get whirled into a vortex of uncertainty. And what I realized, the thought that I had was just keep going, just keep going, just keep going. And when I was in radiation, I read a tip that someone had posted somewhere and it said, you have to find ways to do self-care. So every Friday after my fifth radiation appointment for the week, I would go and buy myself a scratch off lottery ticket just so I could have the rush of scratching it off even if I didn't win. And that just whole, that whole mindset of just keep going. Like I would look forward to Friday and then uh, you know, as the months went by after I finished treatment, I would try to do something nice for myself once a month. I bought a new monitor for my computer. I started walking. So I bought myself a pair of new running shoes and, and I just kept going back to baby steps, baby steps, baby steps. For me, that's what kept me going. I don't have to run the marathon. I just have to take a baby step. So that's my experience with resilience. Um, my question for you, Steve, is can you define resiliency? Why is it important for people to have? Like, I just, I just knew I had to keep going, but I didn't really frame it in terms of resilience. Yeah, you know, it's a good, good question. And, you know, I think you bring up an interesting point, Barry, in, in a sense, being resilient, and we've talked about this, one of my favorite mantra, right? Our goal is progress, not perfection. Yeah. But being resilient is a process. And um, it's it's a skill that uh, we may not use it or be aware of it, but it's something we can develop, right? Almost like a, a, a muscle. Uh, it allows us to bounce back from setbacks. And I'd like to think of you know, when we think about bouncing back, and if you think about, you know, what you've been through with your health, what the world went through with the pandemic, many of us bounce back, but it was almost more of a reactive versus um, something that was mindful, right, with purpose. So we're reacting versus responding. So when we talk about resiliency, sometimes it's overcoming adversities with um, with with a, a, a grace and a style that's positive versus a negative draining way to, to come back. It's really coping well with change. Uh, and again, for most people personally and professionally, life is always changing and things are always coming down the road. It's also something that we learn. Again, think about yourself now, where you are as a person, personally and professionally. There are things that we would get concerned, frustrated, upset about. Now we take them in stride, right? We're rolling with the punches, so to speak, or we're learning to ride the waves, right? We can't stop the waves, but we can learn to surf. So resiliency is a state of mind. It's the ability to recover quickly without being overwhelmed or acting in destructive ways versus some, you know, we can react in a way, but we want it to be less destructive if possible. For some people, it's being flexible and adaptive or adaptable. And for other people, how do we rebound from major setbacks? And it's funny, you know, we, some of you, some of you know that I go these uh, hiking trips for, for these week long hiking trips. And uh, over the last seven, eight years or so, and I've been hiking with my, my sons for, for 20 years on and off. But when we're going on these mountains, um, I remember one of the young scouts saying, Mr. Picaro, how come we're going up? But this part of the mountain, we went this little gorge, this little chasm. And my friend said, that's a PUD, P-U-D. And we're like, what's a PUD? He goes, it's a pointless up and down. And even though we see those on the trail, we see those in life as well. Mm -hmm. Even though we're still going up, we're going to have these little pointless ups and downs. And that's where 
having that resiliency or being resilient allows you to come back up on the other end. Can you give some examples of resiliency or how somebody would respond to those ups and downs in a resilient way? Yeah, and again, this is this is um it's going to be slightly different for each person. Again, we're unique our experiences, our perspectives, our values, our training, uh the way we're hardwired. Some people may see something as simple as um uh you know, uh, having a, a broken um printer. They may get all upset and concerned about it. That's Other me. people <laughs> Other people are going to say, and, and again, it, it puts things in perspective, right? Hey, you know what? That's a bump in the road, right? Again, my background, I, I, I just had this discussion the other day. I was in the operating room in the Navy, surgical technology, first assisting, scrubbing in on surgery. Um, I've been there for delivery, C-sections, emergency surgeries, all types of things. Uh, I've been out in the field with scouts on mountains, all types of weather. I've been on roadside accidents. I've been in different areas. And, and for me, there may be little bumps in the road, but when I put things in perspective, it's not life or death, mm -hmm. especially. And again, when I met Barry, um, I was already in my coaching and training business, but I was on call for almost well, 24 years working in the operating room. And we got called to the operating room. It was like being a firefighter. And sometimes it was life or death, whether I was scrubbing in surgery or uh, I was in orthopedic sales. I started off in orthopedic trauma. And, you know, there are times I would get calls from my level one hospital, Steve, you know, big surgery case, nurses need help setting up the equipment. You need to be there in 30 minutes. That was important. That was learning to discern what was important, what wasn't. So there are things that we do. And if you think about a stress ball, how do we, how do we handle stress? And this is really the big thing, the way Barry handles stress versus the way I handle stress. It's not better or worse. It, it's what works for her and what works for me and you may have your own ways of doing that as well so whether it's something again minor and work a printer is a perfect example you know the internet you know we, we've all been there when we're trying to get an email out and it goes down or something happens my battery dies on my cell phone or i accidentally delete something when we need it for the most part it's our perspective and the way we look at the situation that allows us to change and be resilient. That's so, interesting. That's yeah. Interesting. Yeah, because uh, how I used to be and how I am now, you know, I can feel my blood pressure going up when something is going wrong. And I've learned to just be like, you know what? It's not the end of the world. Just breathe and try to fix it. Or if you can't fix it because it's out of your control, it's out of your control. It will get fixed. So I definitely uh, have, have come a little further in that way myself. So my next question would be then, how does somebody measure how resilient they are? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I'll share a quick story. Um, put things in perspective. I never... I never really thought I was resilient. Like a lot of things, we look in the mirror and we we see ourselves a certain way, but you also have to uh, try to step back and be objective. And um, again, having another conversation, this happened, uh, geez, it probably had to happen 10 years ago. Um, I was on a camping trip with the Boy Scouts uh, I had another adult in the car. Uh, I had a full-size Chevy Suburban. Um, we had nine people in that car because I had the front row, which was great. And I bought that car for scouting. We were on a canoe trip. I had a trailer with six canoes and a car full of people. Wow. 
my suburban was a 2000 i bought it off the lot i ordered it i think it was the first uh second well first car i ever ordered theoretically i think they bought it and gave it to me off the lot but anyways um we were going up to vermont to go um canoeing down the connecticut river and all of a sudden i'm driving and i look over to the gentleman and the, the other adult and i said uh i think i lost my brakes we were going over this mountain road two lane highway and he looks at me and he goes are you serious i said yep i oh. lost my brakes oh my and and i pumped my brakes i slowed down i downshifted i i had a coast and i couldn't you know when you're there with all the all the the youth I had to be very cool and calm and collective and got to be the grown up. <laughs> well, it's funny because on one hand, it happened so quickly, I just saw a spot up ahead and I pulled in and I used the emergency brake and I said his name happened to be Steve as well. I said, "Steve, let's look out because I feel like my brake line just broke." And in New England, there's a lot of salt on the road. And sure enough, my brake line just happened to give out. And we looked under, there was a pile of uh, brake fluid. But he looked at me and he's like, oh my gosh, you, you don't even break a sweat. And I said, I was sweating on the inside. Yeah. And, you know, but at the same time, you think about it again, all the things that I have done up to that point was was preparing me for those situations. So when we think about how do you uh, measure your resilience to what's going on, there are a couple criteria that I would um, share. And again, it's going to be slightly different for everyone. Um, maybe the first question you may ask yourself, how do you adapt to change? Are you easily adapting or is it hard to change? And little things that happen and uh whether it's driving on the road it's frustrating with traffic do you go with the flow or do you get road rage do you get frustrated little things that happen mm. you know when you go get a cup of coffee and maybe they don't have your flavor do you get upset you just roll with it well flavored coffee was your first mistake <laughs> Well, and it doesn't have to be a real big flavor, but it could be, I like once in a while, I have hazelnut. That's about as crazy as I get, but do you adapt easily to change? Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes there are changes that we want, right? We want new technology, right? We want the latest cell phone, the latest computer, the latest fill in the gap, but there are other things we don't want to change right? because, you know, we get comfortable. Right. Another thing you could look at, do you see the glass as half full or half empty? Are you an optimist? Are you a pessimist? And again, this is not judgmental. It's more observational, right? And we're creatures of habit, tradition, and custom. You know, we've been doing things a certain way. And if you have a certain default mode, and if that works for you, that's fine. But if you want to be more resilient going forward, what's the one or two things that you'd like to change or do differently? Sometimes perspective is so important. Mm -hmm. The other thing that um, I've become an expert at is laughing at myself. Mm. Can you look in the mirror? Can you can you can you look at the mirror? And see yourself warts and all and say, hey, I am what I am. Are you comfortable in your own skin? Well, and that's hard for some people. Yeah. I, and Barry, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you. <laughs> so it sounds like perspective is one thing and having optimism is another thing. What are some of the other qualities of people that are like really highly resilient? Well, I would say having a certain level of confidence, and um, I think it's important to know that you feel comfortable dealing with, and we just talked about improvising, adapting, and overcoming, right? Being prepared as a scout to, to be able to handle the things that come at you. 
right? Knowing that, yes, I have some training, I have some experience, I have some uh, education, some wisdom, some insight. I'm ready to take whatever comes on towards me. And the funny thing is, many people have all of these these items they need for this this recipe for success. Sometimes they're afraid to pull it out and use it. Mm -hmm. uh, not, being confident is important, but the other thing that's very interesting and sometimes underrated is having a strong support network, family, mm -hmm. friends, colleagues. It's amazing how during the pandemic, a lot of people were detached and they, they could feel their resilience giving way a little bit. And there are times when I go to meetings, whether it's with my veteran friends, my scouting friends, my coaching colleagues and friends, where we go to give energy and get energy, right? We feed and nourish each other. Hmm. So that strong network, um, as, as, you know, as my wife says, hey, sometimes she would enjoy when I would take the boys camping and she would have a weekend alone. And it is great to have that time to 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 take care of yourself, self-care and, and, and focus on yourself. But there are times when we need that support network. And when we don't have it, I think, is when we miss it the most. Yeah. Well, sounds like scouting in the Navy kind of shaped your ability to flex your resilience muscle. And for me, it kind of took getting cancer, which is not a strategy I recommend for people uh, yeah. who are trying to develop resilience. So could you give us maybe some tips and strategies to develop a more resilient outlook on life? Yeah, well, I'll share one that you reminded me of. And uh, you may not have come out and said it, but um, you took some of these challenges that you went through personally as an opportunity for personal growth mm -hmm. uh, to learn more about yourself and the opportunity to learn about other things that were affecting your body. And when you when you take challenges as an opportunity for growth, it kind of positions you in, in I mean, it's nice to win, but if I can't win, I want to learn, right? Either we win or we learn. There is never a lose situation. And I think it's really perspective when you're looking at that. Mm. So if you think about one of the things that you did, when we think about strategies and best practices, being curious and, and um, focused on growth, either personal or professional, allowed you to overcome some of these these adversities i i think it's funny and again i talk a lot about recipe for success right um your recipe for resiliency is going to be different than mine and other people yeah but the commonality there is it's going to focus on doing more of the things that make you successful and you're very curious as an individual from what I know, yeah. Um, having strong and healthy relationships, again, friends, family, including yourself. Are you comfortable with yourself? I think it's it's funny sometimes. People don't appreciate that, you know, when they say I, I have a healthy relationship. Even having friends that you can bounce ideas for. You can call and vent and share experiences. Hey, this is what I went through. What did you go through, right? Brainstorming, very important. We, it's interesting, even though we, we want to be separated by technology, we still want to connect with people. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I don't know. And I don't know everything, right? I want to be surrounded by people who are, um, have experiences that we can leverage for each other. Yeah. And it's interesting that you bring that up because, you know, growing up, I always used to think I don't have that many friends. But as I got older, I realized that the true friends that I have, and I can count them on one hand, 
are rocks. They are the people that I can go to if I have a problem or a question. Well, what you just said, bounce things off of. That network is so important. And I, you know, I, I think we all have the one person we go to for you know, professional things we want to bounce off of, another person that we go to for personal things we want to bounce off of, and then uh, family. So it's it's interesting that you end up creating a team of these people. They're, they're like your, your superheroes. Um, I read a book once and I wish I could remember what it was. I don't think it was What Color Is Your Parachute? But it talked about um, in your mind's eye, go into a room, and in that room are your superheroes. And it's people from anywhere in history. It could be President Lincoln. It could be Barbara Streisand. It could be uh, Desmond Tutu, whoever. But each person, you know, got a label of what they were good at and what they did to help you. And so part of figuring out what you need is you know what would that person do because the reason they're your hero is because they're really good at something whether it's um you know building resilience being resilient overcoming hardships whatever it is and sometimes i think back to that virtual room that i built with those people and it's like wow this is a really good team and I, I still do it to this day. You know, I have what would blank do when I run into something? And I have had that malfunctioning printer that I just wanted to throw against the wall. I know. I got it. I, I'm getting better now. I just put it in the closet. I know. Well, it's 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 funny. And but the other one of the other most uh, I would say helpful ways helpful ways to approach this is being flexible, right? Mm -hmm. uh, emotionally and mentally, mm -hmm. right? How do we be strong and gentle, sensitive and tough, calm and emotional, serious and playful at the same time, mm -hmm. right? We want to have that flexibility to be able to expand and contract as the situation demands and needed. Right. Putting things in perspective, rising or lowering or moving to the left or right as a situation, you know, requires. Mm. I think the other thing when you think about this, too, is a strong sense of self, including self-esteem, confidence, motivation, awareness, being able to handle difficult times. It's funny, you know, going backpacking for a week, being, you know, we were up in Maine. It's the furthest north, Mount Katahdin, Mount uh, Baxter State Park. You know, no airplanes, no cell signals, truly in the backwoods. Uh, being prepared, you know, I, I had to take wilderness first aid. I've taken all types of preparedness to handle those situations, hoping we never see them. But it's the same thing that happens in life, right? It's better to need it and not have it than not have it and need it, right? So what do we do personally and professionally to prepare for that? Mm. The other outlook is very interesting. How optimistic are we, right? We want the expectations that things are going to work out and, and be on the positive side. I know Sometimes, you know, growing up in certain situations, oh, that will never work. That will, there were always people who always saw the downside. The naysayers. Yes. Yeah. Eeyore, right? Was mm -hmm. a perfect example. And yet there were people who were always cheerleading saying, hey, this will work out. Don't worry about it. I like to be somewhere in the middle, you know, depending on the situation. I'm a realist. And at the same time, being prepared. Being optimistic, I think, is important, but we prepare like a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Following that approach, I think being empathetic is important, seeing things from other people's perspective, uh, being intuitive and creative to resolve some of these issues, right? Rise to the occasion, look beyond what we can hear and think and see and feel, right? Get the input. 
And it's hard sometimes to trust this because we've all made mistakes. I've made a lot of mistakes. And at the same time, I want to trust the people, right? Our collective wisdom is very powerful. And having that faith and that that relationship to, to trust other people and sometimes with your life is very important. Yeah. And other people may uh, put their life in your hands. And that's a very daunting, you know, humbling experience. Yeah. And, and again, I keep going back to my experience with cancer because it was just every aspect rolled into one thing because it is, you know, in your head until you learn otherwise life or death. And I, I've always known that that humor is my, uh, I don't want to say weapon, it's my defense mechanism. And when I was going through my cancer treatment, I started thinking about all the people every day that lie on that radiation table and with their woe is me and I don't feel good and all that negative, unhappy, unhealthy energy that these uh, technicians have to deal with. So I found myself going in there every day and cracking jokes or making them laugh or saying something silly in Spanish that really didn't translate into English. And I knew I was onto something when unsolicited at different points in my radiation process, those people would come in and say, oh, you're the highlight of our day. We love it when you come in for radiation because you just make us laugh. You know, and maybe they say that to everybody and maybe that was to make me feel good. But the flip side is maybe it was true. And that's what I wanted. I didn't want to go in there and bring them down. They have work to do. I'd rather have them have a positive work environment because I it was what it was. I had to be there. I didn't have a choice. And same for them. So, you know, I didn't I just didn't want to focus on any of that negative stuff. And I think for me. Uh, sometimes having that level of optimism is very helpful, but it does get frustrating when you face a setback because you feel like your optimism was wasted. But at the same time, I think, well, what choice did I have? Because if I had approached this with an attitude that wasn't optimistic, it wasn't going to change anything. So you might as well just be optimistic. And, yeah. and I think that that's, that's where my resilience, where, where, where I notice my resilience, because, you know, living in L.A. for so long, anytime something weird happens, I would just go, plot twist. <laughs> Without because, a doubt. Yeah. It, I mean, like, your life is a story, you know, or the change the scene or change the chapter. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I try, I'm constantly, I mean, and everybody about, everybody knows this about me. I am constantly trying to rewrite my life. You know, I didn't like that last chapter. Let's write a new one. I mean, I even made a huge LinkedIn blog post about writing the next chapter because I try to look forward and I found myself for years and years and years being stuck in the past. And that stuckness was what was preventing me from being most optimistic. So I guess I'm just an example of what building resiliency looks like. <laughs> Yeah, well, Barry, you bring up a good point. And before I forget, I would say the last thing that would be very helpful, and you're alluding to this self-care, right? Setting boundaries, uh, be willing to, to put yourself first and have those clear-cut boundaries. And it is hard sometimes because we do, m most people are caregivers, right? We're taking care of our family, we're taking care of clients, customers, colleagues, co-workers. Sometimes we're so busy taking care of others, we don't have anything left for us. Yeah. So if you're going to be resilient, you want to be able to set your boundaries and take care of yourself. Which is, it's hard sometimes because mm -hmm. we don't want to be self-centered selfish. or selfish. Yeah, And, you know whether you have a spouse, a partner, children, pets, customers counting on you, if we don't take care of ourselves, we're not going to be able to take care of anyone. And you know what? Self-care is another topic we'll talk about in the future. But let's move on and talk about 
how do we take all of these ideas and incorporate them into a an outlook, an approach, you know, whether it's a mindset, a philosophy, um, uh, a culture, our own culture, our own uh, uh, philosophy. It's again, slightly different for everybody, but there's, I would say there's a minimum things you need to go forward. Let's take a few minutes. I think, Barry, I think this is important to, to in, include this in this, in this discussion. Okay. If you don't mind, um, because once we're aware of this, this kind of goes back to, you know, I, I think of Batman or Bat Girl or Bat Woman, but it's really Batman, right? He has this utility belt with all these little tools on it. And there are times we need to emphasize or de-emphasize certain tools depending on the situation. Right. And when I think about some of these tools, when it comes to being resilient, we have to use the right tool for the right job. Mm -hmm. So a couple things that I think are, to me, fundamental is positive self-talk, um, promoting positivity to yourself whether you're using, you know, sometimes my wife will sometimes talk to herself, but she's in the other room and she'll be talking. I'll say, what? And she'll say, what? And I say, are you talking to me? She's like, no, I'm talking to myself. We are talking about that, but sometimes it's internal, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes it's just your mind talking to yourself. So part of this is being aware of what you're thinking and what you're promoting yourself, right? And it's it can be very simple as just saying, you know what, I'm going to talk myself down off the ledge, up the ledge, over the ledge, yeah. through the ledge. Yeah. Because we've all been there, right? Like you said, you, you did it, right? Screw it. I'm just going to get through it. I'm going to rewrite my chapter. So I think being aware of that and also... Um, there are there are different things come to mind. Sometimes I I use uh, movie quotes. You know, never give up, never surrender. You know, um, um, overcome and adapt and improvise. Right. I'm going to use that. And there are things that we tell ourselves to get through these little hurdles. So we all have a favorite quote. Maybe a couple favorite. Uh, sayings that go through something, maybe a grandparent or somebody that you grew up with who was a role model. And you said it earlier, Barry, what would so-and-so do? You know, never give up, never surrender type of thing. The The other positive self-talk is um, challenge those negative thoughts. I don't think we can stop them, but I think we can certainly challenge them. And you, you, you shared a great example a minute ago, you know? Yeah, this stinks, but guess what? I'm going to suck it up and keep going. And I think once we, and, and this kind of goes back to what's our default mode. If I let the negativity come in, will it overcome me? Or do I say, you know what? Yeah, that stinks, but I got to keep on trucking. So not today, cancer, not today. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Uh, my wife and I, we we laugh about the, um, uh, like we watch Star Trek with Worf, you know, with Klingon, today's a, you know, a good day to die or today's not a good day to die. And we would joke about certain things like that. Again, not dying, but using that right. approach. So um, the other thing is um, stop the irrational thinking if possible and it's hard sometimes because if we're going down this tunnel and you're like, oh, man, three days in a row, I'm getting so many lefts. I'm, I'm begging for a right hook, you know, because, you know, I can't catch a break. And there are times and days when it feels like that. Yeah. But the reality is, is it irrational? Is it just coincidence? And things happen without a doubt. Um, but I think putting things in perspective and stepping back and again being able to laugh at oneself, having a sense of humor, um, 
I mean, I, I remember, all right, again, what happens on the podcast stays on the podcast. So some of you may notice Barry has a nice head of hair, beautifully quaffed, right? <laughs> uh, me, not so much. And on occasion, I shave my head once in a while, um, almost every other day, or sometimes every day. One day I was going to a meeting and I'm running late and I'm in the shower and I'm like, man, I look like a Chia pet. And I start, well, I didn't realize it, but I cut myself and I went to the meeting. I'm in the meeting. I'm there for an hour. I go to use the restroom and I look and I had a big cut on the side of my head and a big thing of blood. And I'm like, are you serious? No one said anything to me the whole time. And, you know, I'm sitting there laughing. I'm thinking, oh, my gosh. Yeah, and it's, that, it's, puts, that puts uh, having spinach in your teeth in a whole different level. Barry, I, oh I was, I, I'm like, I was so busy driving. I never even thought about it because, you know, you, you're shaving. You can't see. It's just so funny. So you, you talk about flipping things to the positive. I'm like, well, obviously it didn't impact the meeting. Nobody said anything. It was a good meeting. But I'm over here thinking, man, what a mutton head, you know, and uh Sometimes you got to stop and look and just laugh at that situation. That's where the positive talk comes in. So oh, this was a great conversation. Thank you. I'm I'm feeling better already. Yes. <laughs> and my battery is dying. So my computer isn't, but I am. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to share a couple more things and then we're going to wrap it up because I know um, I mean, I could we could talk about this forever. And this is a work in progress, right? Again, as we go through. So think about perspective. Think about reframing things. Reinterpret the meaning of the situation. Again, did I, is this a little bump in the road or is it a mountain in the road, right? When I lost my brakes with a, with a fully laden suburban with nine people and a, and a, a trailer of canoes yeah that was pretty serious yeah but it could have been worse mm -hmm. so i think you have to sh focus on our strengths our capabilities um on one hand when i told my wife she goes oh weren't you scared i said well honey it's not the first time i've ever driven without brakes and she goes what i'm like oh yeah when i had my fiat x19 when i had my mg these little cars you know you're working you're fixing and, um, oh yeah, my motorcycle, when the, when the brake went on that, you know, you think about all these things, but we roll with it. We incorporate it. We learn from that. So part of this is shift our focus and perspective away from the negative, focus on what we can do and do more of that. So our next tip when we're developing this outlook is really learning from our experiences. And I think it's important to remember there are many things we go through that we can extrapolate information and say, how do I take this and overlay it to my existing situation? And we do that a lot. We're not even aware of that. And it's amazing how sometimes, and again, I think of some of the examples with the scouts they're like, Mr. Picaro, we've never done this. And I'll say, yes, but you've done this, this, and this. And all of a sudden, the light bulb goes off. And I think for many of us professionally and personally, we do this. We don't think about it. But I think going forward, post-pandemic, a lot of the stuff we're doing, it's amazing what we've gone through. Bar Barry shared some great examples of what she's gone through. I've been through stuff. And there are days when I think I couldn't go through what other people have gone through. And other people will say, well, you've been through a lot. And I'll say it's nothing compared to what you've been through. So think about not only can we learn from our own experiences, but we can learn from other experiences as well. Um, one other thing I think is very important, talking about developing new, new skills and knowledge. In a sense, we, we fill in the gaps. When we talk about developing and being prepared. And, and Barry and I have talked a lot about this over the years. When we got on LinkedIn, 
We didn't know what we were doing. Nobody knew what they were doing, right? It was a new experience and we made mistakes, but we learned from that. And those were the stepping stones to helping us build our resiliency. Um, and, you know, we laugh about it now. It's like, we didn't know what we were doing, but that was part of that adventure. The, the, goal, the, the skills and the knowledge Along the way, we built social connections, and uh, Barry and I didn't know each other. Well, we kind of did. That well, was, that's an interesting story for another podcast. <laughs> possibly, but but there's also, I think, another thing when we talk about developing resiliency, a, a positive outlook is is having that sense of humor, realizing that we are going to trip, fall, stumble, but that's okay getting back up is the important part right you know it's not like we're going to not ever make a mistake and move forward and i think once you realize that it starts allowing we're giving ourselves permission to grow and ideally we want to grow up not out and sometimes we do that so any thoughts barry when we talk about positive outlook because i know there are times when, you know, it's 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 hard to have a positive outlook. No no doubt about it. It is. And you know what? Um for me on those days, if I don't have a positive outlook, sometimes at eleven o'clock, I just look in the mirror, look up at the sky, look at the TV, and I'm like, tomorrow's another day, time to go to bed, do over. And I just have to I just let the day go and know that tomorrow will be different. And Usually it is, you know, it's very rare that that we actually live Groundhog Day in real life, even though sometimes it feels like it. Every day really is a chance to start over. And that's another thing that I have learned to embrace. And it took a long time to get there. You know, and a lot of people do feel like they're on the hamster wheel of life. And it's the same thing over and over and over. But if you just shift your mindset that that's really what it is you know we're in control of our destiny and if we think it's going to be a crappy day it's going to be a crappy day and if we wake up and think it's going to be a good day we can make it a good day because you have choice right I know. I know and that goes back to accepting right we can't stop the waves but we can learn to surf mm -hmm. physically mentally emotionally spiritually all these things come together and it's worth repeating, right? It's our mindset, our attitude, and the way we position ourselves. And mm -hmm. it's so important to realize, you know, we are going to make decisions. We want to respond, not react. And for many of us, sometimes we react, and that damages our resilience. When we respond, that, in a sense, it's, it's like working out. It creates that muscle. Having a sense of humor is so important to have that stress relief. When yeah. my boys were younger and we were home, when they were home, they're all in, we're empty nesters now, but some of the best parts of the day was sitting around the table, sharing stories. We still talk about this 20 years later. One of the kids was drinking milk. Someone told something funny and they spit it across the table and, you know, we laugh about that and all the funny stuff we used to do. That humor is a pressure valve to relieve stress. Yep. We find humor in stressful situations because you just have to laugh how absurd, uh, absurd it is. Mm -hmm. And the irony and, you know, it, it's it's to Barry's point, when life gives you lemons, we're making lemonade or lemon margaritas or lemon martinis or whatever you're drinking. Yep. And um, I was just going to say from my from my time living in L.A. and, you know, being in and around the entertainment industry, you know, like I said earlier, the whole this whole thing of looking at life as a series of plot twists and spit takes. I mean, who doesn't love a joke so funny that milk comes out your nose? And sometimes if you screw up really badly. You just have to be able to laugh at yourself. You just do. So yeah. you know, a, a lot of the stuff that you're talking about resonates with me because the biggest tool in my utility belt is humor. So I am just hearing this and going, thank goodness for my humor. You are quite funny. <laughs> All right. So a couple things and then we'll wrap it up because it's, um, again, 
This is a great topic. We're, we're just scratching the surface, 50,000 foot view. We mentioned earlier about self-care. And again, many of us are in a caregiver role, even with pets. You know, I, I you know, we laugh. Um, we had a gecko, a, a leopard gecko that lived 22 years. My son got when he was seven. And, you know, we, we used to laugh because we would have to get crickets and mealworms and feed the gecko. But it was part of the family. And, uh, you know, whether you have dogs, cats, guinea pigs, fish, whatever you have, right, we have to take care of ourselves the way we take care of other creatures. Right. Sleeping right, eating right, getting some exercise. And um, we're in no position to know what's best for other people but find out what works, right? Get back to basics and fundamentals. We need to recharge the brain to be at our best. And one of the things in America that we don't do, we don't take vacation, we don't take time off, we don't disconnect. One of the reasons why I enjoy going on these hikes for a week, you know, we really get out of the mm -hmm. office um, and it is physically disconnecting, but Put yourself first. We talked about setting boundaries. Remember, laughter is fun, good for our soul, that good hearty laugh. It's amazing. Um, you know, I shared one of the workshops I was talking about stress reduction, how there are days I'll wake up, have my coffee, and there's a few comedians I'll follow on YouTube. So I'll go from reading the news, which is a down downer, right? to watching a few of these comedy clips and I'm cracking up and it's a great way to start the day. Yeah. Think of something that brings a smile to your face. Think of a friend, think of something that will help you maintain that resiliency throughout the day and the week. Relationships, Barry and I talk about this. When the pandemic started, I was just telling someone the other day, we had a cocktails and conversation. You know, for those first few months, we were, I learned not to drink in Zoom. And, <laughs> um, but we want to have those relationships to keep going, right? Sometimes we share energy. Sometimes we borrow that. We want to take uh, time to reframe and to put things in perspective. Sometimes we are overwhelmed and we're so busy falling forward. We have to take that time to catch ourselves. Taking a breath to reframe is very helpful. Mm -hmm. And it is hard. Many of us are running from meeting to meeting, appointment to appointment. Again, we recharge our phones. We put gas or you recharge your car. Make sure you recharge yourself. Taking a mental break, a physical break, and sometimes other breaks are very important. Your resiliency is a muscle and like any piece of equipment needs to be taken care of. So I want to leave it there. And uh, Barry, anything you want to share before we wrap it up today? No, I, you're definitely hitting a topic that I think affects a lot of people. You know, I remember listening to an Oprah Winfrey talk and she said, you know, you come with spirit in your tank. And if you don't refill your spirit, you don't have it to give to other people. And it's that same thing. It, and and self-care could be physical self-care. It can be emotional self-care. It can be mental self-care. It can be continuing education for professional self-care. You have, your, your, your tank has lots of different compartments and you've got to fill the whole tank. So these tips and these um, strategies for re building resilience are very helpful. I feel like I've just been to the gym. <laughs> Excellent. And remember, you know, this is an ongoing process. Barry brought up an interesting point. Um, it doesn't just happen in the workplace. It happens at home. You know, think about not only do you take a break at work or you'll take time off, getting out of your comfort home, uh, comfort at home and going for a drive, going for a date, watching something funny is very important. Um, there are times when my wife says, I'm going to go draw or do genealogy because that's relaxing. And I'll say, I'm going to go in the kitchen. And for mm -hmm. me, this is uh, 
Steve's soups and sauces and sometimes sautés, right? That season. So when I'm cooking, that's relaxing for me. Mm -hmm. So think about what works for you. Incorporate these basic strategies and go out there and bounce back better. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. See you next time.